So as you can see, some new gear sitting next to me. Actually, a lot of new gear, um, a lot of money. Uh, so anyways, let's back up and explain what I'm doing here. Planned on shooting this video outdoors and it started to rain and now it looks like the sun's coming out. Now I'm set all set up. So I'm gonna continue this indoors. Um, on my way out to Baxter State Park, after doing Katahdin and North Brother this winter, I ran into a friend who I hadn't seen in a while. He's not on Facebook, so it's not like you can keep uh, you know up to date these day and ages with people like that. So anyways, he had mentioned uh, you know hooking up and doing a hike. One thing led to another. I don't, oh, I saw it on a meetup. He posted a meetup that he was uh, doing a mountaineering class, some glacial navigation, crevasse rescue class, blah, 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 and then hike Mount Baker. So I messaged him. Um, and here we are. I don't know how much money in gear now, maybe a thousand bucks sitting right here on the couch and on my, my hip and uh, getting ready to go to Mount Baker. Now, I need to do a little disclaimer in this video. I'm not an expert, <laughs> not even close. I'm not even an amateur yet. Um, this is just, I'm gonna do a video series of my quest to hike Mount Baker, and then from Mount Baker, obviously, we'll go on to something bigger, like maybe Rainier or um, maybe Denali, who knows? Um, you never know where I'll end up going. But um, I'm just doing, I'm gonna do a video series going through my gear because there's a lot of new firsts for this, for me on this trip. Um, one being a tent. So that'll be my next video will be my uh, new tent that I got, new sleep system. I needed a sleep pad, uh, pillow, you know, a quilt. All, I needed everything because I'm a hammock camper. So uh, that will be at least my second video. Uh, maybe third video will be maybe a little bit of a training video we did up Mount Washington. We're going to do up Mount Washington. Um, uh, we're supposed to meet up and do some rappelling and stuff like that. So I'm going to try to film all this and go through all the steps. An amateur, a, a not even an amateur, I'm not even an amateur, a, a beginner, a novice, I guess we'll use the word novice, would go through to plan this trip on their own because we're not using a guide service to, to hike Mount Baker. So we're on our own. So when I started this, it was, uh, I had no idea. I went to, I went to, uh, they gave you a gear list on uh, Northeast Mountaineering is where we took the class. You needed some, some simple gear, harness, helmet, um, mountaineering boots. Now I went with a double layer because, well, I'll, I won't lie. I got a good price on these. I found them on the Facebook marketplace for 150 bucks. They're $600 boots. Uh, they are not, I, I think the time of the year, I probably will shop around for some single wall, maybe a little bit lighter. These things weigh a ton. These are, these are like walking on my ski boots too. Uh, but anyways, I don't know much about these other than they're double layer, you know, two sets of laces, blah, 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 and stiff and heavy. So you needed mountaineering boots. You needed some crampons, which obviously I already had. You needed an ice axe, which I already had from doing Katad and Jefferson Snowfield. Um, you needed the harness, which I might have mentioned. Uh, they told you to have a belay device, which I bought a simple straight belay, um, which never used. So may return it because I went to the ATC guide, one with guide mode, and that's what I need for kind of a backup rescue item. But I didn't know that at the time. I bought one carabiner. I think that was it. And a, and a, and a piece of rope to, to practice knots on. Oh, and of course the, the mountaineering book, the, the Bible of mountaineering, uh, what is it? Uh, so it's mountaineering, the freedom of the hills. It's been around forever. Probably everybody that's done mountaineering owns it. Um, it's a lot of, you know, diagrams in it, telling you how to do stuff. Uh, um, like I said, I bought it on Kindle. Started going through it. There's so much information. I, I know you can do it on the computer, so I guess that might be helpful, but I was in seeing Steve, who owns a bookstore in Lincoln, New Hampshire, buying a uh, cross-country ski map this winter, and I just randomly asked him if he had the book. He had one soft cover left. I bought it. So I ended up spending more money than I needed to because that book is like 
40-ish bucks. It was 30 on Kindle, so I, I definitely went overboard on that. But anyways, go back to the class. We went up, uh, we, it was supposed to be crappy for the weekend. We ended up having one good day on Saturday. We were supposed to do one day of classwork, which would have been Saturday, one day of outdoor uh, class kind of. Um, on the Willie Slide in, in uh, Hart's location or whatever that area is called. We went up to the Willie Slide and did a day's worth of work out there, but because of the weather, um, Saturday was a good day, Sunday was a really, really crappy day. We ended up doing our outdoor stuff before the indoor stuff. Thank God my group actually kind of went and prepared. We learned a lot of our knots already, so we were able to pull it off, but it added to the brain brain hurt. I mean, it just, I was so overwhelmed in that class and I just, about halfway, my brain just shut down. It, this is all new to me. To some of you that's probably done climbing or at least has some experience in it, it probably isn't a big deal. But for me, everything was new from navigating the, the glacier to how crevasses formed, the snow bridges we talked about, self-arrest, the knots, uh, I mean, I had learned all the knots. I knew them down, but then I couldn't remember the names of them. So they say, tie this knot. And I'd be like, oh, which one is that? Is that the one that you do this? Um, to all the gear we went over, it was a very overwhelming class. We had a great instructor. And of course, some of the people in the class were, had one guy had hiked, um, already hiked Baker, I believe, or he did Rainier. I can't remember which one it was now. So he had all the, all this fancy gear, and I was so that added to the confusion. But anyways, getting on a tear on that. Um, so after we came back from the class, we started a group text with people that are supposedly supposed to be going to this trip, uh, and started we started you know bouncing ideas back and forth. I started watching YouTube, which made it worse. You know, there's tons of YouTube videos out there that everybody does everything differently. Um, but we had decided on certain base equipment that we'd all carry on this trip so we could practice together and, um, and we had all the same gear. So everything was done the same. There was no confusion and so on. So the plan is right now, uh, we're flying out to, uh, Seattle on right before the 4th of July. We'll hike up to the base camp on 4th of July day set up camp because we're going to camp and then we will practice crevasse rescue walking with a rope for that rest of that day because it's only like six or seven miles up to the camp i guess and then we'll spend the night get up the next morning early hike baker seven thousand feet of elevation gain about well 14 miles from summit uh from trailhead to trailhead but so it won't be quite as much because we're going to come back and stay at the camp so uh probably be i don't know 12 ish i'm guessing i'm just that's just pulling out of my head um, and come back, spend the night and then hike out the next morning. So we'll start here with a rope. Ropes alone <laughs> are a confusing thing. There's static rope, there's dry ropes, there's this rope, there's that rope. Now I'm not going to go into detail on it. I'm just going to tell you that I bought a eight millimeter, 60 meter long dry rope I couldn't even tell you if this one was static or not at this point. Um, it said it was, the uses from REI said it was good for mountaineering and climbing. And I wanted the lightest rope possible, which eight millimeters seemed to be the smallest you wanted to go. Um, so I've got this. This price tag on this, close to 200 bucks. Um, and I weighed it 10 pounds. So, and that's eight millimeter. A lot of people use nine and 10, eight and a half. Some guys grabbed eight and a half because we're going to run two two person rope teams so we can cover a little bit more ground um and we'll figure that if somebody goes in a crevasse the one person will stop and then the other rope other team will assist in the rescue if need be so that is the plan with that so i'm not going to talk too much about rope right now because i don't know anything i do plan on taking a rock climbing class so I can learn more about belaying and ascending and all that stuff, you know, maybe get refresher in the knots. We decided we're gonna carry a snow stake. This is good for banging into the ground as one of your, one of your two anchors, you want two. Um, ideally, you'd want two snow stakes. We're only gonna carry one, use the ice axe 
as a dead man acre for the second one. You can use this as a dead man acre too. Anchor, I think I'm anchor. Um, if you don't have, you know, you have a lot of snow and don't feel like it would stay in as a stake. Um, so you, cause you want, you know, we two anchors, but then again, like I said, we're going to have multiple rope teams. One you, we could use one of their, um, stakes. So use two stakes to, to put in an, you know, set up a anchor system. Um, the other thing we've decided we're going to carry, we went out and bought, put it in the same spot every time so I can find it. So as far as crevasse rescues go, if you watch on YouTube, you'll see a million and one different ways of doing this because there literally is probably a million ways of doing it. No, not quite a million. I know that's an exaggeration, but there's hundreds of ways of doing a crevasse rescue. Okay, we got that. Um, so we decided to go with the simple, keep it, you know, the saying, keep it simple, stupid, which wasn't as simple as I thought it would be because, again, I watched, uh, I go this is the, and let's start with what I, we bought. So we bought the pretzel crevasse, petzel, excuse me, not pretzel, petzel crevasse rescue kit, which came with two um, locking carabiners, manual locking carabiners. These are the um, D style carabiner because they look like a D. So it comes with two of those. Comes with a um, micro traction, which is a capture motion capture device or something like that. Um, I don't think I'm getting that term right. Basically, it will stop. It's one, a one, one, think about it a one way valve for a rope. It's got some spikies in there that stop it from going back. Um, so you have that. You have uh, a T block or a, a, I call it a T block, but it's a, what do they call it? What do they call it? I didn't write it on here, did they? Oh, yep. Tie block, but everybody calls, seems to call them T blocks. This is, again, um, uh, this will, this is a locking block. We'll lock on the rope, you put a carabiner through it, put the rope through, put a carabiner through it. And this is, a, and again, this one can be slid though, if you use it correctly. So you can it'll grip on the rope, pull, and it, you can slide it back up. So it's almost like a Prusik. Um, actually, they consider it an ascending device. It, it, the, they claim it's the lightest one and it, it was expensive. It was in, it's in the 40 or 50 bucks. And this, you know, this is an ascending device too. Um, you obviously need a carabiner or something to grip that. And then it comes with a um, pulley, partner pulley is what they call this. So the, the idea is, idea, as we mean to say, I keep on saying that, is got your buddies hanging down over the crevice, crevasse, and you do your, obviously you set up your, um, your anchor system, and then you kind of go back, make sure he's okay. If they're conscious and communicating and not hurt, you throw down a loop, you know, you throw down some of the rope. So you basically have uh, like a, a, they call it a C. Again, I'm not, I'm not an expert here. Um, a C rescue or whatever. So you drop down your rope with this pulley. They put the pulley through, you know, the pulley on them. They attach it to their harness. So this cuts down a lot of the resistance. And then up on your end, you go through, you go back to your master master uh, lock and um, you hook another carabiner because you never open that and you hook your micro traction to that. Capture progress, yeah, capture progress device. So you put your rope through, make sure it only goes, it'll go one way, it'll have arrows on it. And then at the end, you put your um, T-block and that's your, your, what they call the, the tractor. And so you, you basically make a three to one pulley system. So if that person, you know, weighs 200 pounds, you're only, you're pulling up a third of that, I guess. Um, I am not sure why they send you the harness. Uh, they, not the harness, the, uh, the uh, I call it Cuban fiber, Dyneema um, sling. It's, I thought it was for, if you had to ascend down and, you know, descend and then ascend back up in the crevasse. I'm not sure why they send you this. Maybe I've seen people use it as a prusik to capture 
um, the capture instead of a, you know, kind of like in the spot of uh, the T block and stuff. I'm not really sure why it's part of the kit, but it is. Um, and you'd use it for, you could use it for your anchor. That's probably, to me, it's a little short. I had bought a, a longer one for the anchor, so I didn't even think of it as that. This what this is more than enough um, Dyneema to make a nice, good anchor, um, you know, with a two, two anchor spot. So I'm not sure. Um, that might be why for the anchor. Um, like I said, I looked up, uh, I actually Googled, you know, Petzl crevasse rescue kit and every vi I found like maybe like three videos on it and and everyone they did it differently um so that's the ideal situation uh you could you could uh swap out the micro tracks for your actually for your your ATC belaying device with guide mode as long as it has guide mode you could use that as a capture instead of this you could use prusiks instead of this and instead of um your t-block you could i mean there's just so many different ways of doing it but i'm going to confuse you like i was confused um so what else we got okay so one of the other pieces of gear we decided to go with is and this still has the wrapping on it because it's sharp this is a ice spike you can like you fill in the crevasse you could drill this in and actually hang your you know secure yourself if you had to um which might be a while because we're all first time rescuers if something happens and or you could use this as an anchor spot this one isn't that long it, it, this is the me medium i believe the smallest one they come in three different sizes um as you can see there's only threads from here down that's Basically, the only part that makes this secure, this part is just to get through bad snow. Um, so probably the next size would have been better, but this is good for what I figured I'd use it for. I'm not going to probably, we're not going to be on, you know, if you were on total ice glacier, you'd probably want some of these for rest in, just in case of a rescue. Um, ba -ba -bum, let me see here. I haven't even pulled my belay device off. I keep on talking about it. I haven't even shown you. And this is my one man, uh, auto lock carabiner. I bought by mistake. I, I thought I was buying something for my keys. So this is your regular, uh, excuse me. This is your regular belay device. Uh, you can use this for belaying. Or you could, you could use this one, yeah, just belaying. <laughs> um, so this is the all-in-one, I guess. This one is the, they call it the ATC um, belay device with guide mode. This is the guide mode. And you would put this through a, ca you know, a carabiner to put on your master uh, lock. I don't think, I'm the only thing I'm calling that. It's a master. I don't think it's lock is the right term. But anyways, I will, uh, I will see what it is and maybe put that in the above. Or you can post it below. Like I said, by no means am I an expert. So I probably won't even break. This isn't going with me. Might even return it. I don't know. Um, let's see what else. Got this fancy carabiner, and I, 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 I lost what they term this as. But basically, it's got this little locking part. When you open the gate, you slide it into your harness, and then it locks your harness in this part, and then you can hook everything to that, and it stops you from cross-loading. Um, which is when you turn the, the carabiner gets you using the weakest part of the carabiner. Oh yeah, I didn't even t explain the other carabiner. So then you have your um, HMS carabiners, which are I've heard referred to as a pear carabiner because they're kind of shaped like a pear. You know, you got the wider part up here, so you can put more than one rope tied in, and they they're supposed to stay like this so you know more apt to stay the way they're supposed to where the strongest um, again i got manual locks on these uh, i've got to pick up a couple more of these i'm kind of short on those and so then we have move on to prusik or this technically is my cordelette so you have want to carry a little extra rope for tying stuff off if you had to maybe using on your anchor or something um, then of course 
That reason I have that rope is because it's five millimeter um, di diameter. Uh, you don't want polyester, you want nylon rope. And basically you can make your own prussics. I did this one and it's just two fisherman knots. Or some people refer to these barrel knots. Of course I can't pull it apart right now. You tie two pieces of rope and this is in the book. So you tie the knot on this side and this knot on this side and they just basically collapse in on each other and it makes a nice strong um, you know, knot for a prussic. And boy, you can buy these if you don't want to make them. You can definitely buy them store-bought. I have two of those. Uh, they refer to these, I want to say as jammies. REI sell two sizes, but I, on the packaging, they have three sizes. Each one's color-coded. They're sewn together or something, and then, of course, wrapped nice and neat. And these can be used as your prussics or whatever. So I have three I'm going to carry. Um, I think that is it, other than uh, I can show you in different non-locking carabiner with a wire gate. These I bought for hammock camping and uh, what else? Oh, hanging my keys on my belt loops, my, my uh, Garmin, my InReach. And then of course, they're great gear holders because they're light and they're not, you can use these on stuff you, that you don't need double uh, redundancy on. So something that wouldn't cause you to die if it let go, you could use these on. But I'm going with locking carabiners on everything. Enough of those for that. Um, if I was climbing or doing something different and you had to use a massive amount of carabiners for whatever you're doing, then I could see saving some money with these because these are cheap. They're like maybe like six bucks a piece, which I used to think they were expensive until I started buying these that are like 12 to 20 bucks. Here's a different style one, a smaller one, basically this style, um, but it's locking. And this is gonna be my new key for when I'm skiing. So I can put my keys on and, and lock it in and hopefully it won't come off and lose my key like I did this past winter. So basically that is it. I mean, that is all I know right now. Um, we, we, like I said, we went to the Willie slide. I put some video in of that, of us uh, actually doing some training on that. And then uh, we have a trip planned out to do Lion's Head. I said Mount Washington earlier because we may go to the summit, but we're going to go up to Lion's Head. Um, I'm going to try to film that. And let's see, what else will be after that? We're talking about going down to a state park in New Hampshire and doing some other training there. And then that will probably it till, um, until the actual trip itself, like uh, except for maybe the climbing class I may take. So. So this video series might only end up being like five videos or three videos. I'm not even sure yet. I'm just winging it as I go. So anyways, um, stay tuned for video two, which is going to be my new sleep system, which is mostly Nemo stuff, almost the same color. <laughs> it didn't, didn't plan it that way. It just worked out that way. Uh, and if you found this video helpful in any way, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Um, follow me on Instagram, uh, send me messages or post below. I get back to all my messages that I, that I see or try to. Um, and also, uh, uh, I'm also sharing my Strava, my Strava link now, and soon maybe a Patreon thing. Everybody's telling me I should start a Patreon, so I may may look into that. I'm not even sure what that is yet. So that might be a link at the bottom too. I don't know yet. Uh, anyways, this is Anthony Trail Slipper signing out from the game room in Western Maine. Uh, wish I, now looking outside, I wish I did this outside, but oh well. See you on the trail, the glacier, on the bike. Ooh, maybe I'll go for a bike ride now. Maybe that'll be the next one of the next videos. And, or uh, on the ski slope next season. Never know where you'll see me now. I'm just kind of doing it all now. My ADD is strong and healthy. Over and out.